I'm going to explain the rules of Abyss, a game for 2 to 4 players, designed by Bruno Catala and Charles Chevalier, with artwork by Xavier Collette and published by Bombix. In this game, you will try to satisfy your thirst for power by becoming the king of the Abyss, manipulate and obtain the support of the lords of five guilds to become the most influential being in the deep. Place the game board in the center of the table, shuffle the exploration cards and form a face-down deck in the matching track, then do the same for the lord cards and reveal the first six cards. Shuffle the location, form a face-down stack and reveal the first one. Place the three track next to the board with the token in the top space. Form a face-down pile of monster tokens and another with the key tokens. Give a cup and a pearl to each player. The remaining pearls are placed in the treasury reserve pool. Randomly choose the first player. During your turn, you may first plot at court. This is, you may spend one of your pearls to turn a lord face up and place them in the rightmost empty space of the matching track. You may do this as many times as you have pearls and there are empty spaces available in the court. Next, you must carry out one of the following three actions. Explore the depths, request support from the council, or recruit a lord. You can choose to explore the depths. Turn over exploration cards one by one and place them on the track starting with the leftmost space. If the revealed card is a monster, you can choose to fight it. Victory is automatic and the monster is discarded. You end your turn and win the reward associated with the position of the tree token, which you then return to the first space of the track but you can instead choose to continue your exploration, in which case you move the threat token forward one space on the track and turn over a new card. For each ally card revealed, you must ask each player in turn, starting with the player to your left, to see if any of your opponents wish to purchase it. If they do, the buyer must pay you its cost in pearls. The first card bought each turn costs one pearl, the second two and the third three pearls. Your opponents cannot buy more than one ally each during your turn, and when the deal is done, the buyer adds the new cards directly to their end. If none of your opponents wish to buy the revealed ally from you, you can either add it to your hand for free, which immediately ends your turn, or reveal another exploration card. If all the spaces on the track are filled and no other player wants to buy the last reveal ally, add it to your hand and also win a pearl. If the last exploration card is a monster, you must fight it and you gain the bonus from the threat track plus an additional pearl. When you acquire an ally or fight a monster, your turn ends. All revealed allies are moved to their corresponding council spaces, face down, and any monsters are discarded. If, during the course of the game, the exploration deck runs out, shuffle all the cards from the discard pile to form a new deck. If you choose to request support from the council, add all the ally cards from the pile of your choice to your hand without looking at them first, then it's the next player's turn. You can also choose to recruit a lord belonging to one of the six guilds that is face up on the track by discarding allies from your hand equal to their cost, indicated at the bottom left of each card. You must respect the races indicated for each purchase. In this example, Master of Magic, you must discard at least one jellyfish ally and allies from two other races, regardless to their value, to reach a minimum sum of 10. If you have enough different races but the value of your cards does not reach the cost shown, you can complete your purchase by spending one pearl for each missing point. Most lords have a power. If the text is marked with an arrow, it means that you must apply its effect immediately. If there is no arrow, it means that the power can be activated once per turn as long as the Lord is not used to control a location. After ally cards in your hand are used to recruit a Lord, place the lowest value card in front of you to indicate that this ally is affiliated with you and discard the others. If you have more than one ally of equal lowest value, choose the one to be affiliated. Put the newly recruited lord in front of you. They are said to be free. Slide all the remaining lords on the track to the right. If there are at least three left, the lord you recruited is not replaced. If only two remains, you gain two pearls, and the track is refilled with the top cards from the lord deck. Lastly, 
As soon as you have three keys in front of you, either from your free lords, your tokens, or from a combination of both, you must take a location. You have the choice of taking one of the available face-up locations or you can draw one, two, three, or four locations and must choose from among those. The remaining locations stay visible to all for later turns. Each location can give you fixed number of influence points and or points calculated at the end of the game according to your allies or lords. Take the location you are interested in, place the lords with keys that control it underneath it and discard any key tokens used. These lords are no longer free and you can no longer use their power to their key, but they can no longer be targeted by the powers of opposing lords. When your turn is over, it's the next player's turn to carry out their actions. The game ends either when the Lord's track needs to be refilled but the deck is empty or when a player recruits their 7th Lord. That player finishes their turn and each of their opponents get to play one last turn. Then each player places the weakest ally of each race still in their hand in front of them and the others are discarded. Influence points are then counted using the score pad from controlled locations, recruited lords, whether they control a location or not, the strongest affiliated ally of each race, and your monster tokens. The player with the most influence points is proclaimed the king of the abyss and wins the game. Have a good game.